Uh, this is Jeff, W6FCC. I'm going to go through a couple of quick settings here. I'm on uh, Rich WZ2D's uh, server in New York using VNC. And he's got two radios on his system that he added using the, uh, you know, you go up here to options and you go to local service settings and you add a radio. Go over here to uh, registered radios and you go down and click on the word add and you add a radio and up pops some of this information. First thing you need to do is make sure it says accessible from other PCs if you want to use your radios from another location. I'm not showing the whole screen because there's too much information on here that doesn't need to be published. But if you're going to share your radios you have to make sure that this radio box is set. Next thing you could uh, check into here, then you got to be sure you add yourself as a user. And you can have a registered user, you then put the, uh, and if you have multiple radios, in the case of Rich, you're going to have a drop down box over here. And uh, it is going to tell you, for example, he's got these two radios, and you can see who can use each one. So that's uh, something to know. So I'll put this away. The other thing you want to do is, uh, now normally servers do not have a server connected. Uh, the server is supposed to serve only one purpose and that's to serve up these radios. But in this case for a demonstration I've uh, created a connection to my own server here in California. And one of the things you want to do here is under options and in uh, settings uh, you do want to name your station. So even though it's going to come up with some oddball name here when you've installed our uh, ICOM remote, give your PC a name that makes sense, especially if you're going to be sharing your radio with anyone else. Now you notice here this says WZ2D server. So, and we happen to be, uh, his server is set up for a different set of ports, which is a good idea if you're going to use uh, PC Anywhere or one of these other programs. Don't use the 50,001 through 50,003. Use uh, a different set of ports, 40,001 or even something like 50,011, 12, and 13. They will work to get you out of the way of the default ICOM ports. So now that you've done that, uh, when you connect to a server, let's go over here to this side. You notice he's got his two radios but so far we haven't actually connected to uh, my server. This happens automatically when you add it. So let's go ahead and connect and I'm going to uh, connect to that server and I've already gone through entering my username and password and what have you. Now it says I'm connected. Next thing that happens is this radio list is now populated by the server. I didn't add these radios. I have a 27300s and a 7610 they're added automatically when the uh, server is connected. And these are the names I gave these radios. Rich, Rich didn't name these, I did. And then if you try to connect to one of these radios, let's just try to connect to the 7C low. And actually before I do that, let me go back and, uh, and I'm gonna connect to my own system here. Let's see here. I'll may minimize this window for a second see here. Let me pause this. So let me take a look at my FCC 7610 low or 7300 low. It's right here. And there's not enough information here for you to <laughs> figure out how to connect to any of these radios. But I've got a few radios that I can connect to, which is kind of fun if you want to share your radios. I've got uh, quite a few people that I can uh, use their radios. So let me come down here to uh, my FCC 76 low and there's no one connected to it now. So we're going to go back and we're going to connect to that radio. So you go ahead and right click and I say connect to that particular radio. Next thing it tells you is you need to set up a COM port. Well there's more to it. Not just the COM port. But you also want to be sure to uh, let me move this over when you're, connect, when you're connected to a radio remotely, these network settings for the buffers 
assume that you are connecting to a radio on your own LAN or direct connect. When you're going through the internet, you want to click on this recommended button and say, no, we're going through the internet. Now watch what happens here. When you go direct, we have a, uh, a delay of about 80 milliseconds for transmission and or receive and 100 milliseconds on modulation or transmit. In order to avoid packets being split up, voice packets and, and uh, audio, you set this thing to the internet and what it does is it increases it to 150 to 200. And then the next thing you gotta do is set the virtual port number. And so actually anything will work. Let me just pick, uh, I'll just pick 11 for lack of a better one to pick. And I always use the default device so that when you're interested in changing from a uh, one kind of mic to another or you want to listen on earphones versus the speaker, you can come down here and use the Windows connection, which if I right click on the speaker and headphone jack, and uh, you'll notice here, this is where if you're operating your radio, this is the right place to uh, select the playback and recording and what have you. Now, one of the uh, things that that the program might do. If you notice here, there's uh, quite a bit of these V-Audio settings. Let me be sure that I'm on his system and not this one. Hang on one second here. Okay, we're back looking at uh, Rich's Radio in New York. I right-clicked on the little speaker icon and I brought up the sounds so I could see these various settings and you want to be sure that these defaults are things that will actually work when you first install the program and if you pick these default devices as we've done here sometimes it will pick one of these as the audio to use for either playback or recording it uses one of these virtual audio this is not going to work because these are designed for when you record audio or you playback uh, or wave files, what have you. This is not for live microphone audio and speaker audio. What you want to do is to pick something that's actually there and in this case he's got a USB microphone and you right click and you say you know make configure that or let me see here you click on it and you say I want to make it the default. If I picked something else uh, you, you'll be able to set this as the default you'll notice here and in playback you want to be sure you're not using one of those as playback and I think in his case he's using the uh, USB audio speakers. Okay, so we've picked this, we've picked this and we say you're now connected and you notice he's connected to this FCC from New York to California, he's connected to my system. I'm going to minimize this window right now and I'm going to go over here to my radios that I have and this is the advantage of picking that name as I said remember the W6 WZ2D server well on my radio it says it's busy and it's busy because someone named WZ2D that's named his computer WZ2D server is connecting to my radio so I would know who that is now I go back to uh, go back to the uh, VNC program under options in uh, in when you're picking these uh, user management things you'll notice something here that all of these stations that use Rich's system have admin privileges that does two things Number one, it lets you, if someone's connected to the radio, for example, I go back to, uh, I go back to one of Rich's radios. Let me just do that. I'll put this away. I'm going to connect to his radio from California. Now, right now, there's nobody connected to either radio. So I'm going to minimize this window again. I'm going to go over here now, in my case, Mine is called W6FCC Jeff California. So let me connect to his radio. 
uh, come up here, where is it? Here, I'll connect to his 10 through 40. It says offline. Let me go ahead and connect to Rich's server. Connect. I'll pause this for a second. So we'll resume here. I'm not connected to Rich's server. You go over here to the radio list. And I'm going to connect to his 10 through 40. So I say connect. And it tells me that my virtual port is 13. Again, these virtual port numbers are anywhere from uh, like 1 to 255 or something. These are all created by the ICOM virtual port driver. And uh, let's go ahead and say I'm now connected. And let's go back to Rich's uh, system now. And he's connected to my radio, but if I slide down to his radios, there's Jeff in California connected to his radio. So that's that's how that works. Okay, let me get out of here. I'll just X out this, uh, close this connection. Yes, I want to disconnect. So I'm going to disconnect from his radio. This is really important to do. Oh, another advantage to having the administrative privileges. Rich is currently connected to my radio. If he's there for a long period of time and I don't expect him to be there, I can actually remove him because I have administrative privileges, of course, over my own radios. I can right click here and I can disconnect his connection to my radio. Remember, he's in New York, I'm here. If I hit disconnect, this radio is in use by you sure you want to disconnect it? I say yes, I don't think that Rich is actually there. He left it connected by mistake. So he's no longer connected to my radio. But uh, I think I'm still connected to his. And the answer is yes. Now how do I use, you have to be connected to a radio in order to use it. So I go up here to the connect set. And you have to pick the correct radio model of course. Uh, you have to pick USB for a radio connected to a server through the USB cable. And which one of these radios am I connected to? I'm connected to the 10 through 40. I have to be sure to pick the correct radio. These are all the ones that I could connect to. But I'm going to connect to the 10 through 40 one. And you should notice that this COM port 12 is going to line up with that COM port. This baud rate should be the same as this baud rate. This 7C should be the same as the CIV address. I'm not showing this here because there's too much information for you, but this, this CIV address here should line up. And the speaker and mic are both set to default, so that means that I'm going to set them with Windows. And I also want to make sure that when I turn off my connection, that it also turns off as radio. So I think at this point I'm pretty much set up. I've got the right radio, I've had the correct connection, I have the correct uh, name over here in this radio list, which is where? Up here. That corresponds, so I say OK, and now I can connect. So it'll take a sec here to actually connect. And we're now connected. Now we normally leave these radios with the RF power down low and and uh, so you can see we're, we're, we're monitoring here. Now let's take a look at the uh, setting here, this remote. I'm going to right click on the remote setting and you notice it says mic USB. This is another important setting in RSB01. Let me turn the volume down. It means that when I disconnect from this radio, this uh, one that I'm connected to now, the one that Rich has online, it returns microphone access back to the microphone. Right now I'm controlling it, but it says, you know, when the remote is on or off, 
This might also say remote on or off USB mic, but it's reversed. In other words, when the remote is lit, it's connecting through the USB. When the remote is not lit, it gives control back to the mic. Now, two ways to return to the mic. One is to click on this word remote. And now if Rich were to pick up the microphone at his own radio, he'd be able to control the radio. If I then reconnect, now I have control of the mic. So this is a way to return the mic back to the radio or to take control of it with RSPA1. The other way to return the radio back is to go ahead and uh, click on this connect and actually disconnect RSPA1. But that doesn't remove your actual connection to his radio. It simply says that RSPA1 is no longer controlling it. So if I then click over here and I go back down here to Rich's radio, it's up here I guess, I'm still connected. So what you should do now is you really should disconnect from his radio. So you right click and you say disconnect. And now you've returned his radio so that you're not connected to it and you're not controlling it. Now what happens if you don't connect here? You forget. And even though it's WZ2D7300, it all looks good. I'm connected to his server, so he connected. There's the radio, I forgot to connect to it. And I say, oh, everything looks fine. I'm going to go ahead and, and try to connect to this radio. So I say connect. Now I'm not connected to the radio in the ICOM utility, but I'm trying to connect to it with RSBA1. And it'll sit here and screw around for a while until it finally decides that there's nothing out here to connect to. And I get this message. Well, n sure, it can't it can't access the radio because there's no pathway from RSBA1 through ICOM remote off, off to Rich's radio. So I cancel this. Now, believe it or not, I can connect. Now, as long as this is the one I'm using, this is the uh, 10 through 40. Let's see what happens if I connect now, even though RSBA1 is running. Let me say connect. Serial port, it's going to give me this message again. Say OK. And now I see if I can do anything with the radio. Looks like I'm talking to it. Let me see if I see a scope. Take a look at the center. Turn up the RF gain a little bit. And it doesn't look real good, does it? Let's go down here to 40 meters. So even though I've connected to it, I'm not seeing any signals here. So in this case, what you have to do is you have to disconnect and then reestablish the connect. Even though now I am connected, I can't, I can't just accept that it's going to work. Now I connect and let's see what happens. Now I'm connected. Got the RF gain turned all the way up here for a second. Click on the scope. And now I have activity. So if you're having trouble, you get that radio, you know, can't connect. You do have to kind of go back to the beginning. You have to uh, disconnect with RSBA1. And you may have to then, you know, connect to the radio. And then you go back and re reconnect with RSBA1. A couple other things you might want to check in the set mode area. Set mode has some good settings. The uh, sound level for the USB or the accessory is set to 100. It The max is 255, so this is like 39% of the full volume. Let's just see what that means here. Let me turn the volume up. Now this audio sounds pretty good. Now I'm going to change this from 100 to 255 or 254. Now if your audio sounds like this, this means you're overdriving it. I think anyone can hear that. So if you have terrible sounding audio, it's probably this setting. Next thing you want to do is you want to have this turned on. 
and the reason you want that on is so that you can use this squelch now you notice this little white thing moving up here now it's gonna anybody that falls below that is gonna drop out now the AGC is going to affect how fast that goes if I go slow which is normal for sideband since it's kind of a varying signal strength on a quiet band it's going to have a big impact but I'm going to turn this squelch all the way back down again now going back to the scope this is the last kind of a demo here let me find a frequency that's not in use like here click there put the scope in uh, center mode and let's see what happened. Now, I'm on zero power I have the power set to minimal uh, I'm going to put the mic set the mic set is I don't know about a third the compression I right click and the levels about half so let me bring up the scope again and I'm going to go ahead and transmit and let's see what my signal looks like this is uh, W6FCC testing, one, two, three, four. Hello test, W6FCC. I guess I can turn the mic up a little bit and see what happens here. If I turn this up even more, up to there, for example, bring up the scope again. Hello W6FCC, one, two, three, four. I can then go back off transmit. Now you notice here that I'm in the uh, five kilohertz minus to plus. Uh, there's our center and this is one two three kilohertz wide and again I'm running virtually no power W6 FCC it's probably around five watts turn the transmitter back off again that's a good way to test now how did I be sure that I could do that uh, in the scope settings you want to be sure that it says scope during transmit is on and I don't use this max hold thing center type frequency is carrier point uh, if you set it to filter you don't really learn much I'll go ahead and set it to filter just for a second here let's see what what it looks like when I do that okay one two three four you notice here it's 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 not really indicating whether I'm on upper sideband or lower sideband because I'm in the middle of the audio filter it's kind of useless in my opinion uh, what you really want then is let's bring the scope back up again it keeps disappearing behind the other window if I set this back to I don't like filter center I want the carrier and I also want it to be absolute frequency this way I can see these various frequencies showing down here if I do the other and you notice I'm in the 10 kilohertz wide let me go I'm clicking on this until I get back to let's say 5 and now each one of these lines is one, two, three, four, five. This is going to tell you whether or not you have a three kilohertz wide signal or or larger. And the last thing I like to do in this scope setting, a couple others. Number one, I like the grid to be eight. That's uh, not quite so bright. I like the vertical speed, the waterfall speed, to be slow. Um, I don't care about this waterfall auto hide marker and then the color settings always use fill plus line and if you only want to see just the waveform you don't want to see this watch what happens if I turn this on I'll make that green now let's take a look at this scope put it back over here where you can see a lot of stuff going on hey see this, I don't care for these mountains and what have you. I like to see just the outline. You see the green here. Let me set this again. Let's get rid of that uh, waveform. Make it uh, black. And that's, that's that. And now you get this nice clean looking signal. Also, if you, if you change this from grid 8 to like grid 1, watch what happens now. well it's not making much difference now but in, in a situation where there's very strong signals this will become kind of washed out and then as you change this RF level if I click on it and I use my scroll mouse I'm pulling back on the mouse uh, you'll see that I'm getting an awful lot of uh, 
indication of signal here. I like to kind of make it so that it's around zero. And I guess that is about it for the scope. Oh, you can also set one more thing, and that's the edges of the various bands. Here on 40 meters, I have a 7.0 to 7.3. That's the entire 40 meter band. This is pretty much the voice section, 1, 5 to 3. And this is pretty much the digital or CW portion. The advantage of that is if I'm in the fixed mode and I click on this, there's the first one, 7.0 to 7.3. I click on this again. There's the CW. No, there's the AM portion. Click on it again, and there is the CW portion or digital mode. Let's see what happened here. What I have. Okay, I think that's it for now, W6FCC. Hope that helped. Be sure when you disconnect, though, that you click on this, and then be sure to remove yourself from a radio that you're using. Disconnect here, and you say, yes, I want to disconnect. And now you can go ahead and shut down your, your remote control program, and you can then shut down I ICOM Remote and it'll go through the process of uh, shutting everything down and this is how you should leave your system with no radios attached and uh, you can have your computer back for something else. W6FCC, uh, November 24th, 2019. Hope this helps.